I'm Mike, and in this episode, antibiotic resistant bacteria. Researchers are saying that in a few decades, it will kill more people than cancer. So we're gonna look at their research and the undeniable link to diet. Coming right up. Suddenly, infections that had been a death sentence became something you recovered from in days. It seemed like a miracle. And ever since, we have been living inside the golden epoch of the miracle drugs. And now, we are coming to an end of it. Before I go right to the research, there are some things you need to know. First of all, 80% of antibiotics are used on animals, the majority of which are also the same antibiotics that we use to fight our infections in hospitals on humans. And when I say used on animals, I'm not talking about dogs and cats going to the vet. I'm talking about the billions and billions of farm animals that are not only getting it to help manage disease, they're also getting it to increase growth by a potential 3%. But how much antibiotics do we actually use on the animals? Well, it turns out in 2010, we used 63,000 tons of antibiotics, which is roughly twice as much as all the doctors around the entire world subscribe to fight infectious diseases in humans. You may be wondering how resistance happens in the first place. Well, when you find a way to kill bacteria, since they evolve so fast, if just one bacteria survives that attack, if they evolve some type of resistance, then they will thrive and they will multiply like crazy very quickly and become resistant. In other words, if you use tons and tons of antibiotics, you're training bacteria to fight back. And a lot of these bacteria are dangerous, not just to animals, but really dangerous to humans. In the United States and Europe, 50,000 people a year die of infections, which no drugs can help. The worldwide toll right now is 700,000 deaths. A year. All right, now to that study claiming that antibiotic-resistant bacteria will kill more people than cancer sometime soon. It turns out it was funded by Her Majesty's government, aka Great Britain, as well as the Wellcome Trust, neither of which have any vegan biases, in case you're wondering. And here's the money shot. 10 million people by 2050. AMR is antimicrobial resistance, which is just a more specific term than antibiotic resistant. As you can see, cancer is projected to only be 8 million, so this is more dangerous than cancer, potentially. Now, my issue with this paper is that it completely ignores the real cause, the main driver of antibiotic resistance, which is the massive use on animal agriculture. It's pretty clear that they're trying to downplay this main factor. There it is toward the end of their last point that we should limit or restrict the use of antibiotics on animals. This is the only mention in a 20 page document, yet it's the primary cause. But how does antimicrobial resistance end up killing so many people? Well, they refer to a second dark age in medicine because surgery pretty much ubiquitously uses antibiotics. So when resistance goes up, surgeries are going to start failing a lot. It becomes abundantly clear how somewhat closed-minded and extra not vegan these researchers are, and really just how research-minded they are when they talk about their solutions to this impending crisis. They are research, collaborative research, innovative research, and economic research. Come on! There's nothing about reducing the use of antibiotics in animal agriculture and no recommendations to reduce meat consumption to bring those levels down. It is the main use by a factor of two and they completely ignore it in their conclusion. All right, let's move past this research and on to pigs. You've heard of swine flu. Well, it turns out they use four times as much antibiotics on pigs as they do on cattle. And it's especially scary because pigs are super biologically similar to us, enough so that scientists believe they will soon be transplanting pig hearts into humans. Well, worldwide, we eat about a billion pigs per year. That means that in a 10-year period, more pigs will have lived than human beings. And they are constantly being fed antibiotics in many cases. And as this study shows, swine farmers are six times as likely to be carrying an antibiotic-resistant strain of staph. And now I want to debunk the Animal Health Institute's Common Myths About Antibiotics page, where they are trying to nonsensically defend the use of antibiotics in animal agriculture, and they do a pretty bad job. Let's see, point number one. In this point, they're trying to convey that the antibiotic use in animal agriculture doesn't pose a direct danger to humans when it comes to antibiotic-resistant staph, or staphylococcus. Here, it's completely wrong. They're claiming that since most 
of staff is transferred human to human in hospitals that there's no connection to animal agriculture. But going back to that same study, six times as likely to get uh, antibiotic resistant staff if you're a swine farmer. And it really just takes a patient zero. If one person gets it from the pigs, then they can go to the hospitals and spread it to all the humans everywhere. Next, to try and disprove the fact that 80% of antibiotics are used on animals. Well, they claim that since it's two different sets of data between animals and humans, we shouldn't compare it directly because there are some antibiotics that are only used on animals. Well, here's a chart that shows the ones that are medically relevant or also used on humans, and the list is really long, it's pretty much all of them. It would be incorrect to say that 80% of medically relevant antibiotics are used on animals, but it doesn't really matter because the statement is true and the vast majority of antibiotics are being squandered on animals for no reason, which is why the situation is so dangerous. Now to myth number three, it's a bit like point number one where they were trying to ease your nerves about some type of antibiotic resistant strain of bacteria from an animal, but in this case, they're talking about salmonella in meat, and there is a danger. This study looked at nearly 400 samples of poultry and found that 22% of them were contaminated with salmonella, a third of which were highly antibiotic resistant. The study even concludes with, quote, chicken could be a source for multi-drug resistant salmonellasis in humans, making the direct connection. And other studies show that that salmonella in 84% of cases is resistant to at least one antibiotic. They close their argument with salmonella is quote, virtually 100% destroyed by cooking. So next time when you're around uncooked chicken, just run the other way. We could require agriculture to give up antibiotic use. In conclusion, the choice to flagrantly use antibiotics on animal agriculture could be one of the most regretted decisions in human history, as soon we're going to have millions of deaths per year from it, all for 3% extra growth. In other words, the decision to eat meat just got a lot more dangerous. It's going to be a bit like secondhand smoking, except the secondhand effect is going to be killing everybody's children in the future, regardless of whether or not they eat meat. Now, if you do eat meat because of basic psychology, you probably believe that you eat only antibiotic-free meat. You go to the store, you remember buying antibiotic-free meat, so you only eat antibiotic-free meat. But in reality, if you're going to a restaurant and it doesn't otherwise specify you are eating meat with antibiotics, 99% of animals are factory farmed, get it through your head, all right. Finally, the best way to not fuel this impending antibiotic crisis is to just not support animal cult agriculture whatsoever. Go vegan, don't eat meat, don't buy dairy products that are from animals that are being fed antibiotics. Don't support it at all, and hopefully we can delay this impending crisis. Thank you for watching. Bacteria birth a new generation every 20 minutes. It takes pharmaceutical chemistry 10 years to derive a new drug. Every time we use an antibiotic, we give the bacteria billions of chances to crack the codes of the defenses we've constructed. There has never yet been a drug they could not defeat.